question is where you will be discussing what explains the shape of the aggregate demand curve and so this is the curve that we have over here this is a normal aggregate demand curve um, in this case the y-axis represents the general price level and the x-axis represents national income output expenditure and this is the aggregate demand uh, line now let's have a look at the first effect so the first one is income effect so let's say if um, there is an increase in the general price level which basically means that there is inflation in the economy when prices are going high right prices are going up in this case and so what's going to happen is that people's purchasing power will decrease because let's say if i have around 10 rupees right and there are two different chips each cost five rupees and this is my income this is what i'm earning so before the prices went up, when the prices were 5.5, five, in this case, I was able to buy two different packets of chips with the same amount of money. But then when the prices went up, when the general price level went up, then let's say the price of these chips went up to 10. Then in that case, I can only buy one, right? And so as prices are going up, my national income, output or expenditure, since I can only uh, spend so much, so it's going to decrease. Because now I'm buying less uh, as compared to before. Because I was buying, let's say, uh, two packets before, and now I'm buying only one. So the output, national output, well, in this case, decreased, right? So it's going to become something like this. So let's say if this is the case, this is the new case, B, and previously this was the case. A. When prices were lower, when the general price level was lower, in that case, uh, we had a higher national income slash output slash expenditure and when prices are higher the opposite happens the second effect is the substitution effect so let's say if there is an increase in the, in the general price level uh, just like we showed that in the last case and so even in this case there is an increase in general price level so before let's say if it was if it was at point a now it's at point b so it's at a higher point um, if we compare our goods, let's say these are local goods, local to imported goods, these are goods coming in from abroad. And since there is an increase in, in the general price level within our economy, which means that goods and services are becoming expensive, uh, people within our country will choose to well, buy imported goods if they are cheaper. They will try to buy imported goods, goods as compared to buying our own goods because the price of our goods has gone up um, as you can see over here and so this is the substitution effect and so people will demand less of our goods um, regardless of whichever good it is and so the aggregate demand will decrease then the third effect is the interest rate effect and so this one is really interesting so let's discuss this one right away so what's going to happen over here is that let's say if there is an uh, increase in the general price level so again prices are going up so let's say if you are at a here and this is b so the price or or the general price level has gone up um even though the general price level has gone up people will try to maintain their uh, level of consumption so let's say if i was buying two chips previously um, I would still want to buy two chips even after there has been inflation or there has been an increase in the general price level right so there has been in, there has been an increase over here and this is the before part this is what is happening before right and I want to keep this the same even after there is a change in the price level in the general price level and so I still want to consume two chips as we discussed before in this case right then before and then 5, 5 to 10, 10. So let's say before they cost like 5 rupees each and now they cost 10 rupees each. So given my level of income, I can only buy one, but I want to buy two since I want to maintain my level of consumption. And so what's going to happen is my demand for money will go up. So demand for money will go up. Right? And money um money also has a demand supply curve so let's just draw this one out this is not how it is but i'm just gonna show it to you guys so 
this is the demand curve, supply curve, and so this is supply, this demand, right? Um, and I think this represents interest rate. Interest rate. And so let's say the demand of money was somewhere around here before at this equilibrium point uh, previously, and then there is an increase in the demand for money. So there is a shift to the right of the demand curve for money. What's going to happen is that the value of money or the price of money goes up. So as you can see, it goes from A to B. So this is the price of money or the value of money, which is also known as the interest rate. So interest rate by definition is something else, but um, in terms of the concept, interest rate is the value of money or the price of money in a given economy at that point in time. So this is the case. So prices are going up. The purchasing power of people is going down. People still uh, want to maintain their level of consumption, and so they will demand more of money, right? Um, and when the demand for money goes up, the price of money goes up. The price of money is the same thing as the interest rate in a given economy, and so the price of uh, and so the interest rates will go up. The price of money is going up, which is the same thing as interest rates. Right. So the interest rate is going up in the given economy. So that's pretty much it from this video.